In, med in medicine, we were preconditioned to reject anything alternative against anything, against energy healing, against acupuncture, acupressure, against herbal, you know, we were conditioned to, we were kind of trained to resist anything related to alternative treatments other than what we've been taught. Hi everyone, this is Sam Karashi. I used to be a psychiatric resident in an addiction hospital and now I'm on YouTube. My producer keeps showing me videos that I've never seen and the idea is to react to them in real time. Uh, the focus right now is my strange addiction, but it could be anything. So I'm not sure what the video is going to be. So let's see. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen a lot and uh, I've seen a lot of videos. Mm, I did not expect that. Okay. Come on, Toby. Come on. Come on. My name is Carrie. I'm 53 years old. I'm from Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I'm addicted to drinking my urine. <sighs> oh, my oh, my oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. drinking contest. It's Actually, I saw this. I, I watched it. Pro I don't know how many years ago, and I think I blocked it out. I don't, I don't I think I probably watched the first two minutes and I don't even remember anything. It's just, you know, just to be completely transparent here. It's easier to drink than water. Really? For the past four okay. years, <laughs> Carrie has been drinking nearly all of her urine. It started as just one glass in the morning. Now she consumes up to five glasses every day. I like warm pee. It's comforting. Here's the thing, usually in my videos, I always wear the psychiatrist hat and I'm very composed. Uh, sometimes certain videos really get to you because you're human at the end of the day, you know, everybody's human. I'm human and so it's really hard sometimes to... <sighs> okay. Drinking urine. Okay, let me, let me... Drinking urine. Drinking urine. Okay. So if you are... If somebody's drinking urine, I'm trying to kind of calm what's going on in my head right now. Thank you, Tobias. That was very, very nice of you. Very kind of you to share something like this. This really took me by surprise. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> I need to recenter myself. This is insane. Okay. For someone to drink urine, you're either going to be drinking it because of scientific evidence to support that it's healthy. And that's one aspect of it. People, because there's, you know, there's a lot going on around the idea of the benefits of urine for reducing inflammation for pain. And that's a different side of it. I'm focusing on the psychological aspect, but I really would like to know why did she start? When did she start? What was the triggering event that made it, that made her start? And yeah, what's, what is, if it is, if it is an addiction, which I would imagine it is, what is it an adaptation to? Also, the usual. Married, children, family, what do they think? How does that affect her life? How does that affect her relationships? How does that affect work? Very important. First time I drank my urine, I didn't throw up. You didn't. And it wasn't horrible. So I thought, you know what? I can do this. Sometimes it's salty. Sometimes it tastes like plum champagne. Champagne. Mmm. <laughs> Maybe a little lemon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh my god. But Carrie doesn't drink urine just because she loves the taste. Her addiction began two years after being diagnosed with cancer. I was. Here diagnosed with malignant melanoma, stage three, and they took out 16 of my lymph nodes, found cancer in three of them under this arm. And they told me uh, with the chemo, I'd have a year to live. Carrie decided against chemo, instead turning to urine therapy, an ancient and long discounted practice to maintain health. Four years later, she still uses it to fight her disease. She has never consulted a physician about her unorthodox treatment. 
the psychology of it is one thing and the science behind it is another and I addressed that at the beginning because it's interesting the con the content the ingredients that lie within urine have proven in certain studies to combat inflammation there's a lot of studies linking inflammation chronic inflammation to cancer so it's not that far off to kind of make that jump if chronic inflammation is in its is linked to cancer and then you have something that is anti-inflammatory that counters the chronic inflammation that it makes sense for it to affect cancer but we're not talking about cancer we're not talking about cures we're not talking about treatments this video is that's not the reason why I'm watching this um, but it is it is worth exploring and experimenting and not experimenting with the urine no that's, that's not what I meant I mean it's interesting to explore experiment with the information as in go through it research and find that I'm actually I'm actually interested to go back into that in medic in medicine we were preconditioned to reject anything alternative against anything against energy healing against acupuncture acupressure against herbal you know we were conditioned to we were kind of trained to resist anything related to alternative treatments other than what we've been taught but that's interesting that she didn't go through chemo and she did that and I just quickly gave you a connection between urine and cancer and that's the link between urine and inflammation and chronic inflammation linked to cancer but that's I mean there's it needs further investigation let me put it that way I use urine for toothpaste I think it's brightening my teeth from the inside out I use it's highly acidic so I would imagine so my ears, behind my ears through my hair adding it to your bath is really good for your skin this is my eye cup and I fill it up with urine and then hold it over my eye with my eye open it's not easy because it burns this is a neti pot I use it for nasal drinking it's kind of tricky you gotta do it just right and breathe at the same time while you're just putting a little teeny bit in there and swallowing at the same time her daughters worry their mom's addiction is killing her especially after finding a suspicious mole on her back my concerns are whether or not the urine is helping with the cancer to really think that this is the best thing for her to be doing to help her health get better. I don't know, I'm just scared. I want my mom here. The fact that she started drinking urine may be linked to it or the way they're highlighting it as though that it came out, it, that mole appeared and they don't know what the mole is. I, I don't know what the mole is. It could be malignant, it could be benign. But whether it's linked to the urine or not is a different story. Because urine does contain, the, it, it's, it's releasing toxins, right? Um, and I think a lot of the studies, if, I'm, if my memory is serving me, it's not necessarily about using the urine as is, but extracting elements from the urine. Uh, not, never, I mean, regardless of that, I do know of the existence of using actually drinking urine to heal, whether how effective that is is a different story. But it's very important here to point out the difference between correlation and correlation and causation. They're linking the mole to drinking urine, and that may not be the case. Today, they want to convince Carrie to go to the doctor before it's too late. We want to make sure that you're doing the right things, that you know that we're all taking the right steps, and that we're helping you and supporting you taking those right steps, not taking wrong steps. Yeah, or supporting me doing something that's hurting me. Right. That makes sense to me. Well, so would you, you would feel better if I saw a doctor. And the kids... It would make us all feel a lot better. Like, take a huge weight off of our shoulders. Oh, I love you guys. Mom, do it. I'll go. I'll go to the doctor. In that moment, um, she basically realized the pain they were feeling because of her action and she was re she realized how much they need her how much they want her to be around how much they love her and uh, it's usually when you're completely honest with the person that in a loving way is when relationships begin to heal 
But if you get aggressive in a conversation, you create conflict. You automatically destroy what you're trying to create and trying to build. And it's, it's very important for you to, if you have any form of resentment or anger towards someone you care about because of something they're doing, you need to release the emotions of anger and resentment first. Because when you talk to them, it's not, it doesn't come from a negative emotional place. And I wouldn't call sadness a negative emotional place when you're actually talking to somebody because the sadness is accepted by the other person. It shows vulnerability, so it's easy for the person to not feel threatened by it, and therefore they're not going to be defensive. But if you are aggressive, you're angry, it sometimes works, but in a very specific context. But if you are trying to get someone to change their behavior, and then again, it's hard to change someone's behavior. You can take someone, you can take a horse, you can take a horse to the lake, but you can't make the horse drink. At the end of the day, if the person doesn't want to change, there's nothing really you can do. You can threaten them. You can try to force them, but if you do force them, they comply. When you force someone to change, the change is definitely going to be temporary. It's not going to last because they're doing it for you. They're not doing it for themselves. But even if they're doing it for you, but they feel like they're doing it for themselves as well by sharing how much you love them and how you're feeling because of that, it becomes a lot easier for them to comply, but not to comply, but to decide. It's not about compliance, it's about choosing to do the very thing that's best for them and for you. When the doctor examines the mole on Carrie's back, she's immediately alarmed. So this is irregular in shape. It would strike me as suspicious right away. When melanoma does recur, it tends to recur at a more aggressive phase. And if it's not caught early, it could kill you. What is it you would suggest? In terms of your urine therapy, I would recommend taking a little hiatus for a while. And I suggest a biopsy of that spot on your back. I'm very adverse to knives. This has grown from a very sick place inside. If we cut it from out here, it signals that inside go bananas. OK. Have you lost faith that traditional medicine could help you with your risk for recurrent cancer? Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. I totally have. A lot of people that go against traditional medicine, there are many reasons to do that. Usually it is a personal experience, either that happened to someone you know, or you've gone through it yourself. And I don't know what it was. Was it linked to her condition previously, or was it linked to something else? Better that the urine therapy had failed, and you'd be interested in pursuing something different? Uh-uh. From everything I've read, if I quit, I'll die. She's afraid. She's afraid of death, and everybody is. And certain people are more afraid of death than others for different reasons. But in this situation, it's hard for the physician to tell whether or not the urine was the cause. Correlation versus causation. But that's not the point. The point is to address. And the fact that she doesn't want the biopsy. I get where she's coming from. I get the idea of the fact that if you remove the mole, you are not really resolving the real problem that led to the mole. It's kind of like chopping a branch instead of real, you know, instead of chopping the root. And you're, you're chopping the head of the hydra instead of stabbing the heart of the hydra in order for you to resolve the problem. Because the mole is a symptom of something else that's happening in the body that led to that. So I get where she's coming from. But the logical thing to do is to even explore where that could be coming from on an emotional level, but at the same time, do the biopsy anyway um, to tackle it from both angles. You don't have to be completely going to one extreme versus the other. There's always a middle ground. There's always a middle ground because sometimes it's not this or that. Sometimes it's this and that. It can be both. It doesn't have to be one or the other. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was quite a departure for me, uh, thanks to my producer, Tobias. Thank you. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. If you want me to comment on any videos or do react videos or break down videos for anything, uh, TV show related, movies or whatever you would like, please comment in the section below.
and share that in the, sec in the comment section below. And I wish you an amazing morning, evening, afternoon, night, wherever you are. Bye for now.